my name is Venki Shankar. I'm, uh, I work on Trust Cutters um, in the lab. Uh, I'm the team leader of the replication team. And with me, I have a few of my cluster folks here, ready for answering your questions. OK, so uh, let's begin. So before we start, how many of uh, people here have used cluster? Raise your hands. Very few. Uh, OK, Hadoop? Quite many. OK, okay. so let's see. OK. Uh, so let me start about by talking a bit about cluster effect itself, and then we'll move uh, with the Hadoop big data interface part. So obviously, cluster FS is uh, we are obviously storage. We can scale to petabytes. We are distributed scale out mass, uh, and essentially what we do is we are POSIX compliant, and also we are metadata less. So uh, other if you, if you have, if you have used any other distributed storage, there's a concept called as uh, metadata server. That is a single point of failure. If that goes down, essentially you can't access any files in your distributed system. That's because the metadata server has all the intelligence. So what ClusterFS has, uh, a big advantage is we are metadata-less. And because of that, we are in a very uh, good shape. OK. Uh, let me focus a bit about uh, scale out and distribute feature here. Uh, so with scale out, uh, so any of you who have used cluster of this, uh, we have different topologies in which you can ex uh, in which you can set up your cluster. One is a distribute, distribute replicate, and distribute repli uh, replicate and strike. So with distribute, actually what you do is you have a bunch of servers. You configure your cluster in a distribute mode, and your files are actually hashed to different nodes. So if you want to access files in parallel, you are actually spreading out your load on different servers. And where replicate comes into picture is when you want a fault tolerance, tolerance system in which you distribute files on a bunch of nodes and then replicate it two or three way, depending on what your use case is. Okay. Uh, so uh, at the very top level, uh, that's what I talked about GlusterFS coming a level down. Uh, <coughs> uh, GlusterFS is also Hadoop ready. What What do you mean by that? Uh, so uh, Hadoop is actually a MapReduce framework plus HDFS. HDFS is Hadoop Distributed File System, so which is basically uh, uh, has a centralized metadata server, also called as name node, and a, a bunch of storage nodes, also called as data nodes. Okay, so where do we come into picture? So as you saw in the earlier slide, we are metadata less. Okay, so if you are using ClusterFS as a backend store for Hadoop you are actually eliminating the name node, which means you are left with the client machine in which the MapReduce job runs and the storage nodes. So, the, so for Hadoop to use the GlusterFS plugin, Hadoop to actually talk to GlusterFS, we have something called as a GlusterFS plugin, which we will come in the next slide. So the good things about that is, uh, if you use, if you plan to use Hadoop with GlusterFS, uh, one plus point is you save data ingestion time. So how does that come into, come into picture? Suppose you are running a Apache web server, okay, and you have lots of access logs. Your site is getting hit pretty badly, and you have lots and lots of access logs, and you won't now want to analyze data. So what you do? You pick up the access logs and dump it to uh, HDFS. So as you see, you are actually copying data from one file system to another. Okay, where ClusterFS can help you in that is. Just because we are a POSIX compliant file system and the interface to ClusterFS is via a nat what we call as a native protocol or the Fuse client, you can actually mount a Gluster volume as a normal Unix mount port. Okay, so if you see what you can do in your Apache web server, just point your uh, log directory to the mount port, and there you are done. Every uh, request that is logged by Apache will Apache will act Apache web server is actually uh, going into ClusterFS. Okay, and now when you want to analyze data, you use the ClusterFS Hadoop plugin and, and do your analytics. So where we save time is ingestion. Okay, also uh, another great feature which is you can access data via multiple protocols. That is, uh, as I talked, as I, as I just uh, told about it, Fuse client is something uh, which is the most, uh, which is one of the widely used way of accessing data on ClusterFS. Other uh, other bits include NFS, HTTP interface, which is Open Stack Swift. We also have a 
uh, a plugin for that. So you can use the REST APIs to put, delete, and get files from GlusterFS mount point, and obviously Hadoop itself. Okay, now you have your data on GlusterFS. Now what do you do with it? You run MapReduce jobs on it. And how do you do that? Is what we cover in the next slide. Okay. Okay. So what does it take to run MapReduce jobs on GlusterFS? Two things. One, a GlusterFS Hadoop plugin, that is a jar file, and a configuration file. That's it. Okay. So a plugin, what does a plugin mean? It has to be pluggable. Your application need not do any read write of jobs. It need not be rewritten. Okay, you just take the Hadoop. Uh, GlusterFS Hadoop RPM or build it from source, your wish, and just install it on a machine, do one configuration file, which I'll be showing you as a demo, and then that's it. No rewrite of, no, uh, rewrite of application. Let me cover this uh, a bit about the plugin itself. As of now, it's tech preview. That means you, have, you could have bugs in place. Okay, so if you find it, please report it. Uh, so how does it work internally? Okay, uh, so Hadoop actually provides a uh, an interface called as file system interface. So what we do is just extend that interface. So that interface covers basic uh, uh, operations like open, close, which is very, very uh, basic need to access a file uh, anywhere, and some <coughs> advanced uh, APIs like uh, get me, given a file, get me all the blocks, where, where is it in distributed uh, in a setup, and what is the chunk size. So there are very, very, uh, uh, low level APIs and very, very uh, uh, APIs in which uh, you, you you need to code that API in a way in which you understand the underlying file system. So the GlusterFS plugin does all that for you. Okay. And the communication to, uh, the plugin communicates to GlusterFS via, as I told, the fuse mode or the native code. The other uh, thing uh, that is very, very close to Hadoop is, uh, give me, given a file, where are the blocks? With HDFS, you actually have a centralized metadata server. Uh, so the uh, MapReduce uh, framework actually contacts uh, the name node of the centralized metadata server and gets the uh, list of blocks. With uh, GlusterFS, since we don't have the name node, what we do is uh, there is something called as an extended attribute in a file. It's a file system concept where you can store a key value pair in the, uh, associated with a particular file. So actually, the plugin itself talks to GlusterFS, queries the extended attribute, gets the required amount of uh, intelligence to give it back to Hadoop, and that's it. Then Hadoop take, takes care of scheduling jobs. Okay. So what we have tested it so far, we have tested it with MapReduce existing MapReduce applications. Uh, that is, these include uh, applications that ship with Apache Hadoop, the example applications. And we have, there's something called as Apache Pick, in which you do a scripting kind of thing. Uh, it's not a shell script, it's a normal uh, scripting language. You give it to a Pick binary, and it converts it into a MapReduce application. So we have tested it with Apache Pick as well as HBase. HBase is uh, a, a, a MapReduce database, in which you fire a select query kind of thing, and internally, it's actually a MapReduce application that is okay. Now. Uh, that's it for the talk. I'll just demo. So, yeah, one more thing I want to mention the plugin itself only works with Hadoop, this version of Hadoop 0 0.20.2. Okay, it's it's uh, tied to this version. Uh, we are working on extending the plugin to support other versions, also the current one 1.0. But so that's in progress, that's in the timelines. Okay, uh, okay. now <laughs> I'll show you what uh, configurations you need to do. Once you have untarred Hadoop and done all those relevant changes to uh, Hadoop PNB, there is something called as, uh, this is a job file. You can actually build it from source or have an RPM install. Okay, anyway, it should be present in this specific location. Untar Hadoop and there's a lib directory. Put it in there. This is the job file. And we ship a sample configuration file uh, which you need to edit. That is code site. Uh, please don't touch this one. This is uh, this tells Hadoop to load the cluster FS jar. The rest of all is what you need to touch. Uh, currently, I'm running a OneNote cluster on my laptop only. Okay. Uh, so otherwise, this yeah. So fs default name should be in, in this format: clusterfs colon slash slash. Uh, this localhost should be the name of your your. So this this file will present in all the machines in a cluster, all the nodes in a cluster. So this should be the name of that particular machine. So this is the volume name. 
anybody who has used cluster you actually can create a volume <laughs> in as i said it can be distribute distribute replicate distribute replicate strike to create a volume that is through cluster cli okay i can show you. this i have created a distribute replicate volume with four bricks these are my export directories okay this is my volume name i use the same volume name uh, here this place so this tells hadoop to actually mount this volume via the native protocol and all you can run map reduce jobs on the data present inside this in this volume okay next is the mount point because we use to do a fuse mount you need to give a mount point this directory should be existing that is uh, put it here and the other final thing is this because it needs to do a mount you need to give the host name or the ip address of any storage node okay give it here and this is a performance tunable quick slave io i'll explain this uh, currently just leave it to off this gives a good performance boost uh, that's because the way in which the uh, in which the plugin works but we we have seen some bugs in that so for now just leave it for off okay so you drop the jar you do the configurations and then you do the normal uh, so before that there is map red site this you anyway need to do for your sdfs thing so this has to be pre done with any file system input so once you have done these uh, what you do is you do start mapred.sh okay i have already done that beforehand so what you will see is some demons running these are two demons one is a job tracker one is a task tracker because there is a single node cluster you see it in the same host once that is done now you need to copy some files create some files okay here is the mount point okay uh, so what i will do is uh, add some files in this directory in data okay i have copied some xml some files so actually so so what you would do as an example your apache web server your log file directory would be actually pointing to this okay so whenever there is a set hit on your site it will be logged here and what you can do next is run some job let me show you uh, before i run a job uh, there is this thing called hadoop shell it provides some uh, some basic from this uh, shell you you can run a map reduce job you can run a normal file system operation so let me run a normal ls so if you see uh, because now i have configured it in core site in the configuration file it says initializing cluster reference and then it dumps all those as you see it here in this you can see, see the same thing there so this is hadoop's uh, way of reading so once so if you are uh, this is the way to test out whether your configuration is fine or not you do ls you do cat or something this works now coming to the actual map reduce so uh, i have uh, this th this is the example file that ships with hadoop it's called exa uh, hadoop examples dot jar so there are a bunch of uh, applications these are all map reduce apps pre written for your for your thing to test it out so what i will run is uh, i'll run a grep job a distributed grep job and maybe a distributed word count let's see so how do you run grep so if you just to grab it will show you how to run it okay you do in underscore dev you don't give the actual mount point mnt hadoop don't do that that's internally the, the plugin converts it for you just give in dir and out there for grab and then give the then give the keyword you want to grab for out there So now it's running running map reduce it's 0% map 0% reduce so it's using the server as behind slowly reduce will catch up okay so once this is done parallel you can see here if you do a normal ls you will see the directory is getting created this is what i talk about multi protocol access you you can run it from to see the uh, output from uh, a different mount point from http whatever okay once this is done so Just do a cat of how data of grep and so the references is eight times of the most another job for 